hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Tom Coolery. In this episode, we will be discussing the Black Lives Matter movement, the protests that have been going on, and of course, George Floyd. With my first guest, we have Izzy. She is a photographer and videographer who works primarily with um, filming a lot of concerts and rock shows and things like that. Uh, and she's going to be discussing her viewpoints and what's been going on with her lately. But then we also are going to have my friend Rito come on, who is a massage therapist. And he's also someone who I have seen in the past uh, talking very adamantly on his social media about a lot of these things. And I had been wanting to actually do a podcast episode with him for a while. And lastly, we're going to have Matt jump in towards the tail end of our podcast episode, and he's going to be giving us some input as well about his thoughts of everything that's been going on lately. So without further ado, this is the episode. I will include links down below for er everyone who has guest starred on this podcast. So we could just start with um, what's been, what has been going on with you. You said you're going to be doing a protest tomorrow? Yes, um, there is a, they call it the March for Justice. Okay. Um, it is taking place in the Rockledge Coco area, uh, starting at 2 p.m. Um, they're going to be traveling down Fisk. Okay. So I went from, hey, you know what, I think I want to go to that, because it seems well organized, to, hey, I think I'm going to take pictures. To, Ooh, yeah. Uh, we're the only two freelance photographers that are actually coming. Wow. And everybody else is like official press. And uh, we got approval through the uh, through the organizers to do that. So I'm like simultaneously excited yeah. to be a part of the, uh, And the fact that I uh, am also black yeah. um, just points an, an additional target. So, yeah, I've been kind of coping with that. And hmm. um, I've heard other about than this. that. Yeah. How have you been? Ah, uh, it's been. It feels a like. Joke? Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> it it feels. It, I feel it's really good that that this topic has gotten so big that you can't really get away from it anywhere you go in the media. I mean, that really shows how much effort we're really throwing at it. But it also is. Um, it's something where it gets me thinking a lot about. I don't know, the different, I don't know, the different avenues and different ways in which, I don't know, to help. And then the only thing I could really think of was just, um, just trying to understand better. Just understand what everyone's been what, going through and dealing with. There's, I'm glad that this has become such a public discussion. I'm glad that this has become such a public discussion. Yeah. But holy shit, the timing is terrible right yeah my 2020 is a dumpster fire <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and it just it all came crashing down at the same time yeah um holy crap so i i'm not surprised that we ended up here um yeah. the the conversations of like reality, um and the blm movement have been going around for quite some time mm -hmm. um so you know, it's watching, you know, unarmed black men and women uh, constantly dying is in and of itself bad. But yeah. it, it was it turned out to be the perfect storm. So everybody's locked in their house because of COVID-19. So they're pent up and their yeah. lives have changed already. And that's difficult enough. And yeah. then in very short order, we had the, uh, the flat out murder of Armored Arbery. Ahmad Arbery, excuse me, that jogger mm -hmm. uh, that was killed back in February by two random guys, and those, that didn't even become public information until May. Wow. Uh, there's the conversation regarding Brianna Taylor, mm -hmm. uh, she, a young 20-something woman that was shot and killed in her own home because of a no-knock um, warrant. Huh. So, broken, looking for an assailant that had already been arrested... They went to the wrong house, um, tried to defend herself, they shot her dead. I, what, what warrants a no-knock warrant? I've never even heard of that. I have not heard of that until that case. Wow. I mean, I don't know if it, I haven't looked into it, because at the end of the day, a woman still died in her bed. Yeah. And the, her boyfriend, of whom was, like, trying to intervene, ended up arrested. 
Oh, wow. Um, so that was a hot mess. And then, on top of all of that, George Floyd. Yeah. The, those were the most horrifying eight minutes and 46 seconds of my damn life. Did you... And I did see the video. Yeah. I did see it in full. Oh, wow. Um, I regret doing that sober. Yeah, I, 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 I tried to get through it, but I, it was really tough. I know it's, what you mean. Because it's hell. You are, this, yeah. this man cried out for his dead mother. Like, oh, how, man. how are you, how, how does one be like, oh, well, that sucks. Yeah. It's horrifying. Um, but, um, there is actually a site. Mm-hmm. For those that uh, I know, it's very difficult to watch, and it's 8m46s.com, mm -hmm. 8 minutes 46 seconds. Uh, what this did was, it's basically a timer that goes through 8 minutes and 46 seconds, and it's on a black white text on a black screen. Mm -hmm. The timer is counting down, and while it is counting down, it is giving you quotes and a rundown at the very bottom of real-time events as what happened to uh, Mr. Floyd. Wow. So the things that he has, that he said during that time, um, the things that he experienced, uh, a general rundown of the event is all chronicled there. Those were the longest 8 minutes and 46 seconds of my life watching wow. that. Um, because it's even worse without visuals. Yeah. Because it's so easy for some people to write it off as, you know, just another black guy dead. Because let's be honest, it is what it is. But when it's when there's no voice, no pictures, no visuals, it could be anybody. Yeah, it helps and probably with that to get help people get into the headspace, which is so terrifying, for sure. It's one of the things that a lot of folks are, and I'm probably going to catch a little bit of shit for this, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I try to be understanding too is right now. I understand the concept of, like, white privilege. Mm -hmm. But being white right now is not fun for y'all either. It's not fair. Y'all are having a rough go. Um, mm. Because, yes, uh, the whole Black Lives Matter movement is, around, you know, centered around people of color who are going through oppression, and I recognize that it's very important. Yeah. But there are allies in... There's a lot. There's a lot of them that just, they don't trust y'all in any way possible. And they think that you all have the ability to be racist, and that that can't be true for everybody. So there's that division. Yeah. Uh, my friend is singing Everyone's a Little Bit Racist. So <laughs> have a new view in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Um, it, it, I, mean, I mean, I f genuinely feel not to be the negative Nancy. Yeah. This is a there is a real race war coming. Yeah. I don't even know what's here yet. What do you and do? You think it's fuel? Do you think when emotions die down, it'll get better? Or do you think that this is going to surpass emotions? I think with what's happening now, I think it's probably going to eventually surpass. Okay. Because we've gone from like, look, there have been stories about unarmed black people being killed for years. Mm. Um, the, the one of the first more popular ones in recent memory um, was the story of young Trayvon Martin. Yes. You know, young kid walking home with a bag of spittles and an Arizona tea, wearing a hoodie. And that wasn't even a police brutality conversation. George Zimmerman was not LEO. Mm -hmm. He was some neighborhood watch guy that thinks he's doing good and shot and killed an unarmed kid. Mm -hmm. um, and there were, there was discussion within the town of Sanford because, you know, hashtag Florida. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> But so there were conversations, you know, nationwide about it. But there were no riots, there was no really no massive protests. You get one every now and again. Yeah. But the, if you just look at the news, the whole nation is burning right now. Yes. And I I think it's finally gotten to a point where some people are not gonna quit until it's all burned down. Mm. Um, while I'm talking to you, I'm also starting to gather last-minute resources for this protest um, mm -hmm. to, you know, to make sure that my husband knows who to call in the event that I'm detained or 
normally, look, I'm a concert photographer. All I want out of life really is to take really cool pictures of musicians and do some traveling yeah. and eat really good food and just enjoy life. For the first time in my life ever, I drove home from a friend's house after borrowing a bulletproof vest. Oh, wow. Just in case. No, that's smart. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I was telling a few friends about my decision to go to the protest, and I have some that are very pro-BLM, and I have some that are not so pro-BLM, mm -hmm. and both of them, either way, were like, yeah, Izzy, if you're going, you need, you, need, you need to wear a vest, you need to have some sort of protection, you need to, yeah. you, you need to have something. And I'm just like, oh, okay, sure. So I post off, you know, they, I had plenty of resources, but at the same time, why do so many people have bulletproof vests? <laughs> that's a good question do you do you do you know what these friends do like in their free time or is it part um, of their jobs is no, it only a couple of them are gun owners okay weird hmm. um so i know that there's this uh you know just in case i'm gonna stock up on weapons stock up on riot gear just in case well in case is kind of here <laughs> yeah it's it seems like really scary times if we have to go to peaceful protests being armored I, I, I just, and again, it could be nothing. It yeah. could be nothing. Nothing could happen. It could. Be, I, I, I just, and again, it could be nothing. It yeah. could be nothing. Nothing could happen. It could go completely smoothly, and everybody gets to go home at the end of the day. But at the end of, but to be quite honest, based on what I'm seeing in other places, yeah. both big cities and small towns, um, I, I don't know. Um, I've seen on the Facebook pages of the organizers for this protest, they have received death threats. Wow. There, if, there is rumors that uh, pallets of bricks are going to be placed to incite a riot. Um, there's all kinds of talk, and there's additional protests happening throughout the county, and there are some people posting some not-so-nice things on those pages, too. Yes. Um, like, this person's going to get, I hope this person gets exa exactly the reward they deserve. And things very, very thinly veiled um, threats of attack. Do you um? And, uh, do you have any more info about this one in, in Coco, like the size of it? Sure. Uh, yes, I'd be more than happy to pull that up if you'll just give me one second. Sure. Um, it is being organized by a, uh, being sponsored by a couple of folks. Um, ben and Jerry's of Melbourne That's is sweet. sponsoring this one. Um, by the way, for the, anybody that is pro Black Lives Matter. If you have not had a chance to go to benjerry.com and read their <laughs> statement regarding this, whoo, it is on fire. Really? Wow. I'll ben have to check it out. Ben and Jerry's don't play. Um, but, uh, yes, it is scheduled for uh, June 6th. Um, okay. The event page says 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. However, uh, the article that I saw posted by Space Coast Daily said 2 p.m. Okay. Uh, it is best to go early either way. But... Uh, yes, it is scheduled for uh, June 6th. Um, okay. The event page says 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. However, uh, the article that I saw posted by Space Coast Daily said 2 p.m. Okay. Uh, it is best to go early either way. Um, it is currently set for... I'm trying to see. Um, it is happening rain or shine. Okay. Uh, they have uh, ponchos available if you need one. It is going from Fisk, it's on Fisk Boulevard from Barton to State Road 520. Um, the road, by the way, will be closed starting at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, they are asking, not, oh, they're asking don't bring any backpacks. Um, parking is available at Zion Baptist Church. Um, okay. Scatbox says we'll pick up attendees free of charge from the church and take them to the starting point. Yeah. The scat bus, yes. <laughs> Space Coast Area Transit stands for SCATs. Good job, my friend. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, March is going to start at 3 p.m. Oh, yeah, it's going to start at 3 p.m. Um, there's going to be opening prayer, a speech, another prayer, and then they're going to go ahead and proceed north um, out of the Rockledge area towards Coco. Um, okay. After that, after that, Ben and Jerry's is giving out free ice cream, apparently, so that's interesting. Well, hey. Uh, and they are encouraging, you know, bring a sign expressing how you feel about the situation, um, you know, if you want to bring, uh, you know, a sign with listing or throwing pictures of any, uh, past victims, things mm. like that, and mm -hmm. they're encouraging all of it. Um, I, 
me and a friend of mine are going to work as freelance on behalf of the organization so they can have their own pictures and not have to go through press. Yeah. Um, but there are press outlets of, um, there also. Um, I'm expecting it to be relatively peaceful. Maybe a, you know, a couple of struggles here and there. It, there are currently, uh, let's see. One second, I'm trying to get a number of people. As of right now, 692 have responded as going on the Facebook uh, wow. page. Wow. With That's an additional 1.2 thousand, 1.2K interested in the event. So I'm expecting a relatively large turnout of, you know, almost a thousand folks. Because some people never remember to click going. Some people don't have Facebook, stuff like that. Very true. Or there's uh, word of mouth, I'm sure. So... It's going to be interesting. Uh, this is definitely not the first major event I thought I would be shooting after a COVID lockdown, but hey, dumpster fire. I mean, <laughs> so seeing how this um, is um, a little bit different from your normal um, subjects to to take photos of and, and to document, what's the approach that you're going to take um, for this, you think? So physically, um, it's of course, it's going to be vastly different. 99% uh, of the time, I'm inside of a relatively well-conditioned venue. I'm close to the stage. The worst thing I have to deal with is, you know, potentially a flying beer, a drunk person that's kind of in my way, um, or bad lighting, because stage lighting is sometimes difficult. Yeah. Um, this is physically another, an, another animal altogether. I've never shot anything, you know, any event more than 100 people. Um, it's going to be interesting if I don't get any additional photographers to help. Um, I'm, I'm guessing I'm probably going to be towards the front. My co-shooter is probably going to be off to the side getting folks as they're walking. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as what we're trying to capture, in a way, it's almost the same. It's all about emotion and connection. When I'm photographing a show, uh, my focus is normally on the artist who's putting everything out on that stage, and sometimes I capture the crowd having a good time, jamming, shuffling, doing whatever they do. Um, in this case, it's it's still the same idea. Um, I'm, mm -hmm. wa I'm watching people interact and be in the same space about something that matters to them. Um, I mean, I may see some, I may see some violence, maybe, or angry folks, but I mean, I've shot punk shows. It's not that different. <laughs> That's it's true. It's not that different. I have heard that artists, well, especially photographers, always, they can't help but project their own, like, perception on an experience or on a person um, when they're doing photography. So do you, so the, if things, since we don't know which way it's going to go, whether it'll be more peaceful or more violent, it, or do you think that, which one will want to be your, your focal point more? To express, I, important for me um, to show unity as far as protesters of all ages, races, creeds coming together and just being in the same space. Mm -hmm. But should something go down, um, I'm going to shoot the anger and the violence as long as I can because that has to be documented. I I, I was, I've been debating back and forth regarding even mm -hmm. going, um, because I understand the risks. And yeah. I sat down with my husband, Dan, um, a couple of days ago, and we talked about, you know, what might happen. Mm -hmm. And it's a very difficult conversation to have. Yeah. And I told him, I was like, I don't want to be an activist. I don't. I'm a photographer. I don't want to be an activist. I just want to take, pic, you know, cool pictures of musicians and just be okay. Yeah. And my husband said, with all due respect, uh, I don't agree with you. I think you're absolutely wrong on that. And I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah. And he said, you know, when we first got together, um, we'd only been together maybe a month. You described yourself as a chronicler, a storyteller, oh, someone who is there to capture everything.
everything about what is going on. In order to do that, is you have to be active in the community. In order for you to be a music photographer in this community, you have to go to shows and be a part of the community and engage and be present. Yeah. You're already an activist. As far as I'm concerned, you're just switching subjects. I could see and that. Yeah, um, more of a... Yeah, I mean, in, in the end, it's all... Whether one's a story that's based off of... For entertainment, and the other one's a story of real life. Or they're both equally something that you can... Yeah, you could be an activist for. I I don't necessarily want to be like a wartime correspondent. Yeah. But there are things that... As a member of this community... I'm going to have a different perspective of than somebody that's coming from Channel News 13 mm -hmm. who doesn't live here. Um, or, you know, if they're flying in from some major network, they don't live here. They don't know They don't know what Fisk is. They don't know anything about Coco or Rockledge or Melbourne or Palm Bay or the True. Space Coast. They don't know anything about what life is like here or the people that are coming. It's... I think it. I, I think being a part of this community offers a fresh perspective, and I'd love to think that that's going to project itself um, within my work. But again, let's make sure I survive first. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like you're taking good precautions too, because I, I really think that it's it's not overkill in any sense. It's really it's really just precautions. It. it it's 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 scary that it has to be that way, but it's really smart of you that you reached out to people. It's it is it's terrifying. I, I I will completely level with you. It is not a good time to be black. Mm. Not that there's ever really a great time. Being perfectly honest with you, it's usually not the best. Uh, but it's yeah. really not convenient right now. And um, I I I kind of came to the conclusion that with everything that's going on it's really just not safe for me to be black anywhere people can bust into my home and, and with a no knock warrant and kill me okay i can either be scared to be black at home or i can be scared to be black on the streets making a difference i might as well get up off my ass and go yeah that's been the definitely the 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 thing that i i am here across the board and and i think that every, everyone has every right to, to do that. I mean, if they feel their space is being invaded and they can't even feel safe in their own homes, this is this is not what America should be. <laughs> it's really scary for sure. What what are your personal what have been your personal experiences, um, I guess, that where you've maybe seen I don't know, in your life, if you want to talk about them that, that you feel are really good maybe pointed examples of how there needs to be change. So, I have to say, in the grand scheme of things, on a personal level, I have received racial discrimination and experienced systemic racism. However, compared to some folks, I got lucky. I, yeah. I, I, I got lucky. I live in a relatively diverse community. Um, my husband is white, and my other romantic partners are also white. So I am offered a slight bit of um, advantage protection, even, mm -hmm. when going places. So if I'm in the car, and I have the husband or the boyfriend in the, in the front seat, and I get pulled over, I'm usually not harassed as much, versus being pulled over at 3.30 in the morning after completing a shift, yeah. uh, and I'm pulled over in a dark place, and they're asking all kinds of questions and wanting to search my vehicle. Um, one of the exact examples of just generalized racism yeah. was I was driving through a private neighborhood. I'm not going to name names, but yeah. Um, but I was uh, trying to get to my mom's because I had something to drop off to her before she went to work. She works the graveyard shift, so she has to be at work by 11 p.m. Yeah. So I was kind of rolling through about 10 o'clock at night-ish, um, just kind of rolling through. Uh, my music is on, and it is audible, but it is not blaring, um, because I'm in a residential. Mm -hmm. And I round the corner, and out comes a 
cop car and turns on the lights. Now, this is very important. If you are driving somewhere and in there you do not have a safe place to pull over, you mm. have the right to call 911, mm -hmm. inform them that you are currently driving, there is a cop car behind you, you do not have a safe place to pull over, and they are required to dispatch out to that police department that you do not have a safe place to pull over. Okay. So I did this good, because yeah. um, in, the, in this particular neighborhood, uh, the streets are kind of narrow, and uh, directly at the end of the street, you know, the edges of the street is a ditch, and I'm not pulling over into no ditch. So I <laughs> yeah, <no>. driving <laughs> slowly, and he continued to follow me. I called 911. Hey, my name is. Uh, I am in this neighborhood. I'm being followed by a police officer. I, it is not safe for me to pull over at this time. Absolutely, ma'am. No problem. We'll go ahead and let them know. Okay. I finally get to a safe spot. I pull off to the side. Um, a cop comes out with his hand on his weapon. Yeah. Now, I know the drill. License, registration, and insurance are already in hand. Yep. And he comes up to the window, kind of knocks, put my window down, and I say, you know, good evening, officer, what can I do for you? And he's like, license, registration, and insurance, I immediately hand it over. Yeah. He makes an offhanded comment, like, oh, I see that you're you're used to this, you're quite prepared. And I was just like, yeah, well, it's, uh, I'm a black person and it's 2019, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and, well, that was actually, that was a few years ago, wasn't it? Oh, 2017, you're right. Um, actually, 2018. Um, but, yeah. he, you know, he's says, you know, where are you going? I'm headed to my mother's house. I have to drop something off to her before she goes to work. And he's like, I don't, you know, it, it's very late, and uh, I do not appreciate you blaring your rap music in my neighborhood. Wow. They were, what? And, and, and I say, um, officer, with all due respect, um, I consider myself a bit of a music nerd and I feel relatively confident in informing you that <laughs> One Republic, pop band out of Colorado with five white dudes, is actually not rap at all. <laughs> but okay. All right. I'm, I, I'll bite. That, that's cool. Yeah. Great. And uh, he asks a, color, a couple of other probing questions. And he tells me to step out of the vehicle. I said, sir, am I being detained? Yeah. Why are you asking that? Because I have the right to. Am I being detained? No. Am I free to go? Let me go ahead and finish this up. Writes me a ticket for noise ordinance. Wow. With which I, of which I did not break. Let me go. And then proceeded to follow me to my final destination. Wow. Um, my mother and stepdad were waiting for me. And they're like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I explained to them what happened. The, my stepdad took the ticket and took care of it. I don't know to what extent. I'm not answering any... I don't know. But it, 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 it went away. That's all I need to know. I'm pretty sure he went in there and gave somebody hell. Yeah. Um, but I look at that, insta that incident and something so mundane could have turned dangerous. He immediately got out of the car with his hand on his weapon. Yeah. Inappropriate probing questions. Um, insisted that I must have something in the car. And yeah. I said, you're absolutely free to search as soon as I see a warrant because you do not have probable cause. Um, they get really annoyed when you are semi-familiar with your right. They get aggravated. I was going to ask that. I was going to ask, do you think that it is better to be, to be really highly informed about the uh, uh, rights, like the rights as a citizen in order to be able to um, you know, make sure that whoever is, is the police or whatever, if they, if they are asking questions, do you think that's more beneficial or do you, do you find that it, um, isn't? So at, at the end of the day, I do my best to remain informed about my rights mm -hmm. for no other reason than the fact that I'm an American and they are granted to me. Yeah. Period. Point blank. So if I have that ability, the ability in which to learn, why wouldn't I do so? Um, and it also helps in case somebody else might need that advice and can go seek additional information. Um, I find that in the case of police brutality against blacks, 
it doesn't matter how much information you know, you're screwed anyway. In, mo in, in certain situations. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you are uh, a stereotypical, and I really don't like this word, but I'm going to quote my friend. Uh, so I was going to just quickly make sure we intro. I've got my friend Rito here as well. So we've got hey. another person who's joined. Um, and whenever you want to pop in, Rito, um, feel free to. And, and if you have something you'd like to say on the, on the matter as well, um, I'd like to hear your opinion as well. <laughs> Hi right, guys, sorry about that. I was washing dishes, so I didn't have a chance to uh, to speak earlier. But I was just listening. Yeah, you're good. You gotta catch up on the di them dishes, or they finna pile up on you. <laughs> <laughs> I only got two more left to do. Oh wait, hold up! I don't gotta do anything. Ma took over. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, your experience. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had one very similar a couple of years back. But it wasn't me personally. It was my friend Carl. He was. Your experience, I'm not going to lie to you, I had one very similar a couple of years back. But it wasn't me personally, it was my friend Carl. He was driving home, and one of his tires blew. And instead of, like, he didn't even call the police, he was like two blocks away from his house. And it was the middle of the night, it was like 1 a.m. And he was just going to ride on the rim to get to the house so he could get to his tools to take off his uh, busted tire and put on his spare so he could go buy a new one the next morning, right? Right. Yeah. And for some odd reason, a police officer that was patrolling our neighborhood saw him and approached him. Mind you, this is my boy Carl. He never lies to me about anything. He straight up said that this officer was not being racist. No, it, it wasn't racist, but he kept saying the term you people for young, I'm hoping. Hmm. Because he was referring to how young folk had been drag racing down the street and causing potholes somehow. Like, concrete uh, gets destroyed by someone burning rubber, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Not by nature and trees and, you know, roots right. coming up through the ground or the fact that Florida is sinking into the sand. <laughs> or the fact that literally our tax dollars go to freaking insufficient asphalt that just breaks yes. pretty quickly, actually. It's, it's it's quiet. It's just the sub it's basically suburban. There's no businesses out here really. It's just a quiet area. Yeah. There's cows farm nearby. So of course the roads were not the best. And this is years ago before they even constructed the back road. Yeah. So the potholes were there for a while. But he was sitting there saying that drag races are why it happened and that this young punk needs to get off the road, this that and whatever. So me and my older brother wake up at freaking 1 15 a.m because carl called me in a huff because he just needed a ride home he needed help we grab our tools we go to him we try to get the thing off could not get it off with the tools that we had we could only get it off with the stuff at his house so we said screw it we're right behind you we'll put the hazards on we'll get you home yeah. but the entire time that we were messing with the car there were two patrol cars staring us down from down the road it is the middle of the night we they knew who was in the car but they still stayed to watch. Hmm. And that was very confusing to me. So we get in there, we start driving, and we're literally the turn before our street. And we're pulled over. Hmm. For no reason. Literally, just we had our hazards on out to be home. And we're pulled over again. Yeah. Luckily, they didn't ask to search or anything, but they did ask for all of our stuff. And I, I maintained the voice. I was like, nice and respectful. And I could see my older brother burning the hell up in the side. Like, he was mad. Yeah. He very rarely gets mad. He was mad as well. And, well, my apologies. Don't know if I can swear. My apologies. <laughs> I, I have, so yeah, you're good. I was going to get corrected. Yeah, Could be good. good. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> but we're sitting there wondering why is it that instead of going to patrol, like, why, why is even having to patrol when we live in a quiet area where there hasn't been a rash of breakings at all ever? But why is it that these people decided to take the effort to stop and watch instead of doing exactly what they're supposed to do, which is render aid. Considering his car was incapacitated, they refused to let him drive home, yeah. but they also refused to render aid in order to get him home. Thus forcing the situation where he's either going to have to pay to get it towed or have to just drive off anyway and risk getting a ticket. Yeah. So they mm. literally put him in an impossible situation if we were not able to come get him, and it's the middle of the night. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. So luckily enough, we didn't get in trouble because we literally were two feet away from his house. So he's let us go. 
But it's like, why didn't you just render aid as you're supposed to? Why don't you drive him home like you're supposed to, get tools, and come back and fix the car? Like, that's literally your job as a civil servant. You're supposed yeah. to protect and serve. Why is it that you spent more time wondering if he's going to drag Grace on a rim yeah. than just help him get home? Exactly. Yeah, that, that brings up a good question I want to ask both of you guys. Um, the, I, I don't... I don't know myself personally, so I, I, I don't want to make any assumptions or anything, but I just, with, with the way, it, since the police are supposed to protect and serve, where, where do you guys think the, um, the disconnect is coming from that's creating this, this... The hey, I can give you a, a small piece of, like, information from back in the day that might give you, like, a, an idea of exactly why there's an issue. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day... Back when, you know, everything was segregated, Jim Crow, all that, clans been literally able to roam the streets freely. They required an occupation during the day. And then during this era, not to be all kinds of racial, but during this era, white folk were not skilled laborers yet. Because all the skilled laborers that were, you know, tilling fields, making, hemming clothes, all that stuff, that was on the working class people who were considered at the time less than you know, American citizens, African Americans mm -hmm. that were disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. So the less than skilled laborers who were part of the Klan decided to form an organization that would upkeep the peace. And that ended up being the first iteration of the American police force. They okay. basically were state sanctioned going to keep these people out of our neighborhoods Klansmen. And they were the police force that we had to deal with. And they spent their days over policing black neighborhoods so they could arrest them to basically get rid of any undesirables from their society. And that has never actually been addressed. Because back in 2010, back when Obama was president, the FBI warned that neo Nazis were trading the police force, and that was never addressed. But even before that, they were warned that the Klan has not gotten out of the police force. And okay. I'm not saying all policemen are Klan, that's just crazy. Yeah. I'm saying. The people who started it and have trained people and gotten successors at the highest level have been infected with that mindset. Yeah, because the root... And, okay, so you're saying the root is um, is the thing that no one's really looked at, and that's where it's... Okay, that makes sense. It's, it's a poisoned root to begin with, because it was literally designed as an oppressive tool. That makes a lot of sense. It was created to be surveillance state instead of actually protecting and serving the nation. Wow. Not to mention the fact that police don't actually serve and protect. They've actually, I've quoted this in court multiple times, they have no legal obligation to protect and serve the populace. Police are literally just there to protect capital, which is property from mm. the people who eventually go after capital owners. So this makes which is sense. somehow weird. Yeah, so this makes sense as to why we're seeing things like, you know, the, the police just like mowing people over so they can make room for Trump to walk over to the the to what was it it was a church I believe so he could mm -hmm. do yeah. Up, yeah okay but I mean it, it goes further than Trump by a long shot like he's not even the main issue he's like yeah he stokes racial violence that's that's just a given he's he's a terrible human being hmm. but I mean it's been a problem since forever. we've had the exact same conversations about the exact same problems in America for generations now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, the, a popular, a popular uh, phrase that I have heard amongst um, the, the uh, amongst people of color, and I, I think it's a bit of a stretch, but you get the idea. Uh, slavery didn't really end; it just changed names and appearances. Oh yes, mm -hmm. by far, yes. So, like, yes, it's. Um, Obviously, you know, we wear clothes instead of rags, and most folks don't have chains. Mm -hmm. But if we look at systemic racism, um, you know, redlining communities, yes. mm -hmm. and, um, in, you know, the mass incarceration of people of color for small crimes. Oh, yes, the police have like, massive uh, social and economic control, yes. Wow. So... And here's the thing. Being perfectly honest, I am I'm a medical marijuana patient. I mm -hmm. suffer from uh, a seizure disorder, yeah. um, and it is helping to keep my seizures under control so I can function. Mm -hmm. The day that a dispensary, a place that sells weed, looks like an apple store, 
it's time to get people it's time to get black folks out of jail for petty <laughs> drug crimes all right let, let, let me tell you something about that mm. let me tell you something about that okay <laughs> the people who wanted to keep marijuana illegal for the longest time have been investing secretly like before they legalized it for medical use they were investing it uh in it heavily they were buying farmland they're investing in cigarette companies mm. to start creating like things like jewel pods that would instead of that being jewel like, pods they would be you know like, marijuana pods mm-hmm. like they cr- they literally kept it illegal kept locking people up we used to use marijuana in our medicine before we used poppy because poppy is yeah. just heroin yeah and we right. literally made fentanyl which is just as addictive and more powerful than heroin and we give it to people all the time we used to use marijuana for that and it had far less uh negative repercussions on your body yeah. But they were like, nope, nope, nope. Black people like it, but Hispanic people like it. The Nixon administration literally said, back in the day, they created ads saying, oh, the reason why we need to keep this illegal is because marijuana makes blacks and Latinos hungry for the flesh of white children. You will find these ads. That's insane. You know, if you look at uh, official transcripts from the White House when Nixon was president, his chief of staff even admitted that they will be legal and they just want to uh, keep it illegal to arrest people so they can put them into the system to keep them away from civilized folk, a.k.a. the white society they didn't want us to integrate in. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's so messed up that there's people still locked up for weed for literally no reason. Yes. I, I know I had, I definitely had heard about two years ago about oh, the majority of that because it really didn't, once we started digging into the studies of how beneficial it could be, it, it really made no sense why we were keeping it under such heavy wraps until unless there was some kind of agenda. Because black people and brown people grow the best weed. Because the best weed was not grown in a Euro country or America, they needed to keep it illegal. But because they had uh, decent relationships with Saudi Arabia, they were cool with Poppy, because Poppy was with, from Saudi Arabia, really? and they're fine with dictators, but they were not okay with good marijuana coming from, you know, Jamaica, because Jamaica does not like America. Yeah. Because of the way that they handled a lot of things. Not trying to say that, you know, one side's right or wrong, but let's all be real here. There was literally a reason why they were like, yeah, we're not going to trade with you, and that America would just sanction that country to freaking death. I mean, yeah. look at Cuba. Yeah. Or Venezuela. Yeah. So what? if that's weed was grown in America, you probably have legalized weed. Yeah. But and but now the thing is, um, as somebody of whom has legalized, at least as legal as we can get in Florida, there's still certain hoops you have to jump through. Oh yeah. Um and th- the uh, acquisition of the licensure is not cheap. Um, we had to kind of shell out a little bit to get it. So still, even in low income places, it's still not accessible to to everybody. Wait, there's so many hoops to jump through, it seems like. And it's so, like, um, now one of the other concerns I'm having with what's happening out right now is, uh, unfortunately a negative of being locked in my house. Yeah. Um, I, I'm constantly getting stuck in the the news cycle and the Twitter feed. Oh, yes. and, yeah. Uh, while not right now. Yeah, tell and, me tell me how you guys feel about that with the everything going on with the uh, locked up and then the yeah the social media. Ooh, ooh lord. Um. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that's scaring me right now is I didn't realize how far down the rabbit hole white supremacy goes like i didn't know i had no idea how diverse as far as i didn't know hatred could be that diverse yes so i have learned in the last few weeks that there is a division of um there is a portion of white supremacy that just goes after all people of color. There is a certain division that goes after blacks only, goes after Hispanics only, goes after Asians only. There is a sect of them that go after sex workers or anybody that's posted nudes. Wow. There's a there's sect a, of them. There's a sect of them that goes specifically after white men, of whom has black partners. Yes. Wow. I was about to say, like, there's the interracial couple one that recently just got exposed. Wow. Um, For, uh, 
like they were going ham on Twitter, uh, trying to basically start up a uh, a, a registry of anyone they know or have known to have had an interracial couple. Wow. Like yeah. an interracial partner. That is, home. that is, that's some serious, it sounds like just a bunch of witch hunts. Yes. And the thing is, the thing about witch hunts is they end in death. So mm-hmm. here I am, already afraid for my life as a black person in this world. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, I identify as queer, mm-hmm. a non-binary, because I think gender's kind of dumb, but okay. And <laughs> I'm polyamorous. So I have a white husband. And I have two boyfriends in addition, of whom are also white. We are all in danger simply mm-hmm. for existing? What the yep. fuck? Shit's difficult enough out of here. Come yeah. Give me a goddamn re- break. You gotta remember, the reason why these people require this kind of hatred is because they don't have something to feel great about without you feeling as though you are inferior. And I'm not saying that in their defense. I'm saying that in their mentality, if you ever get a chance, there's a debate that James Baldwin had with the person who basically was like the uh, grandfather of modern day white nationalism. I forget his exact name, but it was was a uh, debate that uh, James Baldwin, one of the greatest black uh, thinkers of all time, and they were just talking about uh, the idea of, uh, what was it? Uh, like the blacks place in society in America and James Baldwin basically was talking about um, it's impossible to have that discussion without first answering for the mentality that, of why yeah. the black man is needed to be inferior to a white man for them to feel as though they have a center and in the hmm. and his answer was instead of to answer said question and try and address it was to basically say, well, I guess now I have to treat you like a white man, a.k.a. I have to treat your ideas as necessary. And basically attempted to just constantly say, I think that there's an issue with you trying to stoke racial violence. Basically the, yeah. why you gotta be racist, Black Lives Matter people. 24 fucking seven. Wow. Like, that's all he kept saying throughout the entire debate. Was basically just trying to say that you're stoking racial tension because you want the quality the entire time wow so finding a way to basically just dismiss it and and de- yes. de- de- yeah like take away it's- and that's exactly what all lives matter and the blue lives matter crew have done like they're they only came to existence after blm came into it and mm-hmm. they are like well we matter too well you're literally saying exactly what blm is saying but you're adding Oh, well, uh, all lives matter. And so when you say, okay, all lives matter, we agree. No one disagrees with that. All lives matter. So how about we release kids from the border, stop bombing the ever-loving Christ out of the Middle East, yeah. free Hong Kong and Tibet from Chinese oppression, uh, free the people of New, uh, North Korea from their oppressors, stop embargoing uh, Cuba and Venezuela because they refused to give us oil back in the goddamn day. Yeah. Like, you care about all lives, let's these things that care about all it's like well, no we don't want to do any of that we just don't want blacks to talk about freaking uh their lives mattering anymore because they hearing i li- uh your life matters too they just hear your life matters more which is completely false wow. the, the yeah. best the best explanation of black lives matter that i ever received has been really recent um let's say that you have two siblings two brothers of whom you love dearly and equally mm-hmm. um you grew up together um, and there's nothing but love in this family. Yeah. Yeah. One of your brother, one of your brothers comes to you in emotional turmoil. They have been attacked. Uh, their character has been undermined. They are sad. They are depressed, and they are coming to you hurting. You do what any good sibling would do, and you take them in your arms, and you love them, and you tell them that they matter to you. Yeah. And your other sibling pops in like, "Yo, what about me? Yes. I matter." Yeah. I matter, and it is your responsibility at that point to go, yes, you do matter. We all matter, but right now, my brother is hurting. Yes. This person needs my help, so I'm going to give them my attention right now. We're not saying only Black Lives Matter. We're not saying Black Mm -hmm. Lives Matter more. We're saying they matter also. They matter too, and 
as a and while we recognize that every life is important, the black ones are in danger right now. Yes. So yes, black lives matter because that's what some folks are forgetting. That's the whole mm -hmm. point. You see, but, but it, in order to admit that and accept that, mm -hmm. that would require a certain self reflection. Yeah. That would that requires self reflection, not just of one's literal self, mm -hmm. but of systemic racism and how we got here. Exactly. Well, and it, nobody wants to do that. Yeah, you and it, that, you are just spitting nothing but truth right now. <laughs> yeah, these are are. these are open conversations that I have had to have <laughs> with people of all races, in fact, yeah, because I I decided uh, one of the things that annoys me is when people are like, just like, oh, you decided to be oppressed, you decided to be queer. You decided to do this. You decided to make your life difficult. Yes, that's right, guys. I woke up one morning and decided to be a Negro. Uh -huh. And uh, I wanted to make sure that my life was as difficult as possible. So, of course, I decided to reject gender. And then... Dare you be happy doing the things you do privately mm -hmm. in your home and be the skin tone you were born with and be loved uh, and be loving in the way that you love. How dare you do that? And... The, there's so many people I have found, especially in the last week, that genuinely want me to die. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah. They mean it in their heart of hearts that I do not deserve to live because of a certain amount of melanin pigmentation. Mm -hmm. it, it's a learned behavior that you get from demic racism. And dehumanization. Like whenever I talk to an outside person and yeah. they start losing the conversation, they'll immediately go, "Well, blacks kill more blacks," and then I immediately say, "Well, that's kind of a fallacy. It doesn't exist. Black on black crime is real." And when I, when I say that, I don't mean black people don't assault black people. I mean you don't call white on white crime white on white crime. You just call it crime. Here, here, yeah. if I may interject, one of the best explanations regarding that argument, the black-on-black -black crime. Mm -hmm. Yes, black-on-black -black crime does exist. But the, the conversation is always, well, black-on-black -black crime is a thing, So, and why aren't they working on that? First of all, there is, a mass, there is a mass amount of people, black and otherwise, that have done everything in their power to set up organizations and break up gang life. So first of all, we ain't been doing nothing, so you're going to have to miss me with that bullshit. Number exactly. two... Number two, when uh, when Jamal shoots Tyrone in the street, he goes to jail. Jamal, Jamal is looking at fifteen years in uh, you know maximum security with no chance of parole. Mm -hmm. When Officer Johnson shoots Tyrone, mm -hmm. he gets paid administrative leave. Yes. Fuck out of here, Mark. And literally yeah. does not have to worry about a goddamn thing after that. Because he's like, yeah, I just killed somebody. But he's just a black guy. I don't care. So, and what is it in the in the in the uh, police policy that that allows for for that to somehow be a loophole when in any other j job capacity a person would would go to jail? Well, you have to remember this: this system was not set up to protect us to yeah. begin with. Those so there may not necessarily be. Yeah, there may not necessarily be uh, any particular doctrine or specific protocol, there but what the, there is. Yeah, it's called. Uh, it's not plausible deniability, but there's another uh, name. I, I literally just read it yesterday. It's like coming to a blank in my. Head. But it, it's basically where cops are allowed to act out in a, any fashion where it's excusable due to the fact that they're in a intense situation. Mm -hmm. And they were not in a proper uh, state of mind to act. That's that's wow. That 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 easily can become one sided because then it it mm -hmm. totally takes away from the person who is being antagonized by the cop. I mean, how is yes. how is anyone who's who is getting approached by a cop going to not also have their state of mind altered? Exactly. Hmm. Very yeah. That's interesting. This law is very interesting because they're right now, there's legislation to get rid of it. Like, well, not reg legislation to get rid of it. There's a proposal to get rid of it. And yeah. Ilhan Omar was people brought this up to trying to get rid of it. Because uh, it basically allows for uh, police officers to just claim, well, I was stressed and I believe this person was a uh, threat to my life. 
So I defended myself with how I believe it to be. Even though everyone successful, they yeah. just claim that and they immediately who investigates the police? Yeah, yeah, police. exactly. Who who makes them accountable? Exactly, which is why there's legislation uh, being in order to start holding the panel for these actions. Problem I, is, is that it's going to be met with extreme hatred yeah. from white supremacists. Because, I mean, what if you've ever wondered why you didn't see cops in uh, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, when the Nazis were freaking uh, marching? Yeah. It's because they were, it was their day off and they were out of people. That's why. Wow. They were there. They were just in the fucking crowd. Wow. And I don't mean that to say all cops are Nazis. I mean to say yeah. they hang out with these motherfuckers. They know what they do and they don't bring them in because that's their friend. And since they're tight with them like that, it's the same reason why the DA does not charge them. They're tight with them. And I don't mean that to say all cops are Nazis. I mean to say yeah. they hang out with these motherfuckers. They know what they do and they don't bring them in because that's their friend. And since they're tight with them like that, it's the same reason why the DA does not charge them. They're tight with them. So even though what they know what they're doing is irreprehensible, that's still their friend. That's their godmother. That's their partner in crime. That, uh, that's yeah. the godfather of their children. Like, there's a reason why they don't get in trouble when they do something illegal. Because when they do something illegal, the people who are there to hold them accountable are literally their friends. Yeah, and it so, makes the system biased, for sure. One of the uh, explanations that was given to me re is regarding yeah. uh, the concept of a good cop versus a bad cop. Okay. Now, I don't like the idea of the ACAB mu movement, all cops are bad or all cops are bastards, yeah. because I do know, deep down inside, there are a lot of people in the LEO field that really just want to serve their community and do good, regardless of skin tone. I know it. I know it for a fact. I have yeah. met mm -hmm. some of these people, and I know that they exist. Oh, yeah. How, however, the problem is the very system in which they live in. Oh, yeah. So the explanation that my mom gave me is the, uh, the, th the, the thousand good cop argument. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Right. So... Um, let's say in a particular police force, you have a thousand good cops. Like, these cops do everything that they can to be by the book. They serve and protect. They do what they need to do every day to serve their community individually. You have a thousand yeah. good cops. Yeah. And you have ten bad cops. The mm -hmm. ones that are violent for no reason. The ones that are farming people of color, the ones that are using inappropriate chokeholds, the ones that are supporting stop, stop and frisk, the ones that are printing things on folks. Mm -hmm. Ten bad cops. You have a thousand good cops and ten bad cops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are working in the same system. They are working in the same department. They are working in the same field. Mm -hmm. The odds are, being totally honest, those thousand good cops know what mm -hmm. ten bad cops are doing. Mm-hmm. And, but out of fear of being ostracized in their community, mm -hmm. losing their, losing their job, losing their tenure, losing their mm -hmm. retirement, losing their ability to feed their families, mm -hmm. they stay silent and don't turn in those ten bad cops. Mm -hmm. While I understand the reasoning for that, you now have one thousand and ten bad cops. Okay. And therefore, yeah. some does not change. Well, well, going back to the all cops are bastards statement. The original purpose for all uh, for ACAB is not to actually call all cops bastards in the sense of like they're bad. It's supposed to be uh, terminology in the sense that all cops are bastards in the biblical sense, as in they don't know their father. Because cops are are huh. looked at in the Marxist uh, sense as uh, class traders, because cops are overwhelmingly working class people, but police forces are there to protect capital. And we are not capital owners, we are laborers. So they come from laborer families, but they are protecting the people who are oppressing laborer families. Huh. So they're called bastards in the sense of, not as shitty people, they're called bastards in the sense that they've abandoned their people in order to, uh, like, ingratiate themselves to masters. It's essentially the same mm. thing that happens when there was a house negro and a field negro. The field negro hates the house negro because the house negro is in there 
sipping the same juice as the master, mm. protecting the house, uh, the same house as the master, sleeping in the attic, eating their scraps. Uh, when the house is burning down, they're willing to literally shed their blood to try and save it because it saves their status. And that's why those people were to as bastard Negroes or house Negroes mm. and were completely separate from field Negroes because it's the exact same thing. They've abandoned their heritage in order to ingratiate themselves to what they believe to be an upper class society. So it's a, okay, so it's a self-abandoning act. It's a, so it kind of mm-hmm. almost sounds borderline, I mean... It's self-hatred. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it's like a self-preservation and it's also, mm-hmm. yeah, a form of, yeah, I can see status. It, so it's sort of like a, it almost feels like a, like its own most- community, yeah. Both definitions have validity. Like that's just the original intention of it. But right now, people are literally saying it as if all cops are evil. And mm-hmm. It's like I know some cops that are decent, and I have the exact same viewpoint as you. Like I literally try and say, well, if you're not turning them in, you're not really a good cop. Yeah. If you're, not, if you're unwilling to tell a police officer that you know is committing uh, wrongs that they need to turn themselves in. If you're scared to turn them in just, and, uh, or like go up the ladder and get rid of them, why are, we need to address that. The fact that you yep. feel as though you need to allow them to continue doing what they do because your hands are tied by upper management is, <laughs> excuse me, is exactly what we mean by systemic racism in the system. Yeah. Because if you're like, well, you know, upper management doesn't care that, uh, doesn't care that they do that to people, then, it just goes back to the exact argument that I talked about at the very beginning when I was discussing how unskilled laborers that were white back in the day formed the police force of America and in its original in its uh, originality. Like yeah. these same people have the same ideology from back then. And they're the ones who keep getting promoted because they're the ones who agreed the most with the previous people. Yeah. So of course they're given the most power and they're the ones that dictate how you do stuff. Wow. Hey, y'all I really hate to interrupt this, but I just opened um, a news article that I think is very relevant. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so we know, um, everybody here I assume, I assume is familiar with the story of Colin Kaepernick, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, for those who are not, um, long, you know, TLDR, basically, Colin Kaepernick was a, an NFL player who wanted to um, protest police brutality in the United States, but yeah. instead of... It, it, but instead of you know making a big stink about it at games, he would take a knee as a sign of respect. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hold on. First, you actually yes, you're right. I am sorry. You are correct. My friend Vanna popped up from the back. First, before choosing to take a knee, he would just refuse to stand mm-hmm. during the uh, pledge of allegiance that was performed at every game. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would simply sit. Um, but after talking to another player, of whom was also a veteran, yes, um, they he made the suggestion of taking a knee instead, and that's what Kaepernick yeah. chose to do. Because now, the NFL... Federation of fallen soldiers, that's what soldiers do. Yeah. So it's like, All right, my brother's Correct. dead, I'm going to take a knee. It was respectful. So, yep. the, NF- the NFL... Um, who, the NFL previously handled this, I would say, not so good. Um, and they basically made it to where Kaepernick no longer has a career. Yep. <laughs> well, um, we blacklisted him. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um... I just opened an article from CNBC that says NFL condemns racism, admits, quote, we were wrong, end quote, not to listen to NFL player protest. Wow. They they wow. finally, somebody finally lit the fire under their ass yeah. and they had to walk it back. But here's uh, the Colin still don't got no job. Mm. Now, now, hold on. Oh, hold on. You're right. No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. You are correct. <laughs> However, this is breaking news within the last hour. Okay, okay. And, yeah. and change takes time. So we don't know. But at this point, I do have to say, he needs to become a uh, a coach. At this point, they yeah. gotta they gotta they gotta make this shit up to him. Not literally, but uh, yeah. The man literally. The fact that they admitted they were wrong is being worth the time. Yeah. To like do the thing he loves because of the fact that he was willing to take like a knee. But when, yep. uh, I forget the player who it was, but there was a player that would literally uh, pray every single game. People were like, Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow, yeah. That yeah. fucking idiot. They were like, oh, he's just, you know, expressing his belief in God. Okay, that's great. Whatever. That's your own thing. I don't mind it. Like, we did not stress 
Tim Tebow. But yeah. Colin, Kaepernick, uh, Colin Kaepernick's knee was such a big issue that they needed to literally get rid of him. That is a massive problem. Yeah. And the fact that Drew Brees chimed in a few days ago talking about some yeah. raw lives matter, blah, blah, blah. I don't like these protests. I heard the about NFL that. is 70% black. Yeah. Your offensive line is going to let them through and have both your kneecaps for you. And then you're going to be like, oh, crap, I, I lost my player's protection. But you didn't just lose your player's protection. You pissed off all those black people who are going to be on the defensive line trying to get at you. Yeah. Uh-huh. You're going to see them split like the Red, like, straight up like the Red Sea. Yeah. Every last one of the freaking enemy uh, coaches are going to be like, I'm Moses in this bitch. <laughs> so he just, he had to immediately walk it back. He was like, I'm wrong. I didn't mean to do this. Blah, 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 blah. But the way they handled the conversation between the two men is something that I always found kind of staggering. Yeah. Because Colin was told, shut up and, uh, what, what, shut up and play. Shut up and dribble. Like, I, blah, 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 I blah. heard that. It was and terrible. Le- yeah, and when LeBron James was uh, was wearing I Can't Breathe shirts, when him and KD were doing that during, the uh, during like, national games, they were just like, oh, okay, shut up and dribble. Yeah. Multiple people. Laura Ingram, especially, that fucking piece of crap, said yeah. that so many different times. Just shut up and dribble. But yeah. But Drew Brees... He's allowed to have an opinion. Yeah. What? So if sports players are only allowed to have an opinion if they agree with you, then you're literally saying, I don't believe really in free speech. I believe in agreement. Like, I can have a conversation with somebody that doesn't agree with me, and we can have a logical debate. But if your first response to seeing or hearing something you don't like is to literally say, shut up and dribble, or, yeah, you guys deserve to be beaten by cops, is disgusting. Yeah. Definitely. It's it's shutting down the conversation for those who need to speak the most, and it's making excuses for those who they are feel like they're probably biased towards. Exactly. And, like, I'm not trying to say white people have, like, a massive bias against black people. That's not what I'm saying. Hmm. But there's an unconscious societal bias that exists. Because when someone sees me, they'll see my glasses, my dark ass skin and my like slightly built figure like that's it they'll be like okay he probably uh, like they'll see my beard that's slightly unkempt right now and they'll just be like oh his favorite music's probably rap he probably uh drinks hennessy which i understand is going to be like oh we don't think that yes very much unfortunately a lot of people do Hmm. because even with my white friends that i hang out with they will still say some shit that's low-key not cool with wow. like, yo, my brother, what's up? Like, j- just say hey, Rito. Yeah. Like, what are you doing, man? Just, just say I, hey, I, Rito. Like, I try, I try really hard to be understanding because I do find that a lot of white folks really just want to relate. Yes. And yeah. They're, they're hard in the right place. They are. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just they, it's they're hard. doing their best. It's it's yeah. poor execution. <laughs> uh, I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. It's not even that's not their fault. Yeah. So like, it's not their thing. fault that they don't really like understand that for generations they did not have this conversation for a reason. And they might be conscious of a bias. They might be conscious that what uh, is going on is improper, and they support. It. And they can literally understand all these points, and that's yeah. great and fantastic. But they might not understand just all of the nuances that are involved when you have a conversation about race in America. Because even now, when I'm hanging out with my friends, I'll, I'll literally tell them, hey, guys, be safe. And they're like, no one's going to hurt me. And yeah. that floors me that they instantaneously have that thought. Yeah. Because ever since I was a kid, my mom literally has with me, yeah, make sure you keep your eyes open because somebody at any point can try to fuck you. Yeah. The fact that, like, they were not born of the threat of danger around every last corner of like I don't even know how many different types of threats there could be in an, uh, in existence currently on a daily basis floors me like I have to be yeah. fearful of police I don't instantly go yo just call the cops I'm like uh, how serious yeah and then I'll determine whether or not we should uh, uh, whether or not my friend should like invest in trying to call the authorities yeah. Like, it, it, it's terrifying. 
it, it's it definitely feels like um, it's something I definitely thought of recently was I I think a lot of people can can understand but they cannot f ever fully because they are not like you said you can you can sit here and you like you can tell like it's, a lot of the stuff you guys have told me tonight is stuff I didn't know so I feel like I can hear it and comprehend it but I didn't live it so yes. I I can have my own things I can say I've been scared of but they're never never going to be on the same I, it's not really ever comparable. Mm. And so, see, this it is the very basis of the concept of white privilege. Yeah. I don't like the word. Yeah. It is uncomfortable, and it's an uncomfortable discussion for everybody. Because every time somebody mentions white privilege to a white person that doesn't understand it, it's always, excuse me, my life is not privileged. I've, my life was hard. And I was like, you're right. You are yeah. absolutely right. Life is hard. It is hard for everybody. It is especially hard for everybody in 2020 because, as I posted in the chat, 2020 is a BDSM <laughs> scene and none of us know the safe word. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, my We really don't. Listen, <laughs> please, please, Daddy, ease up. <laughs> so, what did you just say to me, you little slut? Like, that's all I hear all fucking year, man. Right. But the thing is, one of the th no matter how hard a white person struggles, with very few exceptions, one of your struggles, none of your struggles, for the most part, are going to be related to the color of your skin. Yep. Exactly. You have yeah. struggles about everything else. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. it. Yeah. That's basically what, that's the whole concept of white privilege. Your mm -hmm. life is difficult, but it will not be because of your skin color. Exactly. And, that, and that branches out to other issues such as things like, you know... Wealth and quality, police right. and quality, and How, housing availability. Yeah. Even even Both the discussion. Businesses. Yeah. Like, I, I realized, I, I am, um, I've been, a, you know, I've mentioned earlier, I've been a photographer for many years. This year, um, me and my husband decided to take the jump and actually, like, save up and get an LLC. So we can yeah. make this an official business and do it proper. I wanted to transition away from, thank you, from doing um, my normal day job to doing photography full time, That's and I literally did my homework and found out I'm more likely to get small business loans in the future if my husband is listed as an owner. Wow! Yeah, because he's white. That yes. is see, that's the kind of thing that I, I mean, I would have like never had even. Like, I wouldn't have thought of that. I've had, I mean, I've had an LLC myself, but like, it's ridiculous that that should have to happen because you, right. you deserve to be able to apply for an LLC and get all the same things that anyone else would. Hi. Right, so you want, want me to tell you something that's going to floor you? That's going to yeah. bring this to reality for you? Yeah. Okay. So, in your situation, you, uh, our mutual friend. So I originally forgot to record an intro, but at this point in the podcast, we had our last guest, Matt, join us. Hi. Right, so you want, want me to tell you something that's going to floor you? That's going to yeah. bring this to reality for you? Yeah. Okay. So in your situation, you, uh, our mutual friend, my Nina. Yes. You, you guys talked about how the house was closed just yesterday. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, for a person of color, regardless of which color they are, especially if they're black, though, yeah. uh, obtaining a loan to get a home and mm -hmm. getting it approved you have, let's see, a like a three point five better chance if you are Caucasian to apply for a home loan or a business loan than any African American in this country, regardless of income. So I, mean, I could be a rich as fuck baller. Yeah, and if you're talking about redline laws, right? They will literally assume yes. that I don't have the money for it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So how? Huh. And the, the crazy, the crazy part is, is that this happens. It, this is now starting to branch off into poor white, uh, con, uh, poor white uh, civilization. Basically, mm -hmm. the heartland of Trump's base and the people need all lives matter to make them feel less shitty about their situation. Yeah, is because like they they're considered white trash, and white trash is literally a slur against black people in the sense that. You are white and somehow poor, therefore you are white trash. In the sense of instead of the term that they used back in the term uh, back in the day, which was just trash for black people. Hmm. The reason why you're called white trash is because you're somehow given the socioeconomic advantage of being white and still ended up destitute. Is why they use the term white trash for people. Wow. 
Well, they don't use... The, the concept of black trash is not a thing. Exactly. That's just trash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Huh. And, they don't call somebody Hispanic trash. Yeah, that's true. I've never heard Asian that. Asian trash. But they hear the term white trash because it's like, everyone else is trash but us. How the fuck are you failing? Wow. Like, that's what it means. And it's really disturbing that that somehow got lost in translation with people. I think a lot of things have. I think that that's why a lot of people are ignorant about a lot of ways of, of like what's going on or like the, the root of things because it, it, so many things get lost in translation. It's probably why the, I mean, the conversation is so important. Then we can bring this stuff back to light. I mean, one of the more disturbing stories you can hear about America that is never taught in history class yeah. is the story of uh, uh, what was it? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street at one point was the most prosperous city in America. Mm -hmm. It was a all-black commune. It was socialist communist in the sense that the people's needs were taken care of. They were basically like their own independent economy away from the American one. There's nothing but black-owned businesses. There was uh, the arts being taught. There were amazing professors talking about uh, theology and life. They were exploding. And they were sending people out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, into different cities, and they were educating other black people and starting to bring wealth to their society. Mm -hmm. And when white people found out about it, they literally got together with a giant giant mob Mm -hmm. that was supported by the police and the National Guard. They went to that city, they burned it to the ground, raped women, killed children, burned every last business they could find, and lynched black men. Undiscri- indiscriminately. Wow. And it was never taught in history books. Yeah. But it is forever remembered in every African American that lived in America why they care, why they're not allowed to have black wealth. And that gets lost because when we're educated, we're not taught that. So the people are growing up that think it, shit's not that bad. Yeah. And that America's not really that racist. Just remember, they never want have apologized for the indiscriminate destruction of an entire city simply because it was doing well. Not yeah. because it was a threat, not because they said, I'm going to kill people, not because they said, burn America down to the ground or some shit. It was doing well, and it was black. So they fucking burned it to the ground. Because how dare you dirty blacks ever think you're going to be as good as white society? There is actually an article regarding the massacre of Black Wall Street in the chat right now. It's from the Atlantic. Yes. Um, for fr- for further reading, if you'd like to do that. Um, yeah. I, so why do you guys think that, um, like, why that stuff is is kept from our history in like when teaching uh, like kids in school? To keep white supremacy growing, because no one would ever agree with that sort of shit ass take if they were like. Well, what happens if you just leave black people alone and don't police them? They yeah. fucking thrive. Like when police in New York took a week off from patrol, uh, not a week off, but a few days off of patrolling the streets in black neighborhoods in protest to the mayor claiming that uh, he didn't support them on a certain action. Yeah. Crime went down by 40%. Wow. Because the majority of the crimes that black people are uh, being accused of Mm -hmm. are instigated by police officers' presence. I'm not saying that police officers are beating these people and charging them with crimes. They do that sometimes. Yeah. But you are more inclined to do something illegal if you are impoverished. Because poverty is the biggest leading factor in any country, in any people's uh, likeliness to commit crime yeah poverty if you don't have the social ability to grow or expand you're going to look to crime because you have no other choice or recourse and with black society it was systemically made in that way in order to prevent them from ever getting out of the thumb of an oppressive regime that despised them but made them necessary for them to exist so that way they could feel good because, as James Baldwin has said, yeah. black men don't need the nigger. The nigger was created by the white man. The nigger is necessary for the white man in his own mind so he can be something opposed to it. Wow. 
So they're willing to say, you're a monster, you're impoverished, you're more likely to be criminals because you commit more crime, but they neglect the idea that they're over, at least they're underfunded, and they're consistently told that they're never, they're never going to be anything other than entertainment. They're going to be ballers, they're going to be rappers, they're going to be musicians, but you're never going to be a leader. They gave us a test with uh, a taste with Barack Hussein Obama. Yeah. And what did he do? Jack diddly shit. So, so it's a form of um, like almost scapegoating in a way. Do you think to be able to have to to be able to? Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Is it, do you think it, that's what it is? It's a form of scapegoating. They need it. Hmm. I'm not saying white people as a whole need uh, something to hate. I'm saying the people who were in charge at the time... Yeah, and the ones in power. Realized, yeah, they realized that class is the actual unifying factor. So you need a scapegoat in white supremacy and fascist society, something to hate. Which is how Hitler mm. rose to power. He made it the Jews. Yeah, he made it... He controlled the, the police target. force, mm -hmm. controlled the streets, and he said, Jews are the problem. In modern day... Uh, oh, go ahead. I actually have a question. Oh, go ahead and finish up. But go ahead, go ahead and finish up, my friend. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> in modern day Russia, yeah, Vladimir Putin has an extreme hatred for homosexuals, transgenders, people who do not fit the oh, you know, straight thing. Yeah. Because you gotta have something to hate if you want to have a fascistic society. Because people will only accept the fucked up things that can happen if there's something to believe as otherness. And black people's otherness is required to allow for the police state, surveillance state, and the hatred to it. Because the mm -hmm. only way you can get them to agree to it is for them to have that unconscious bias of, oh, blacks commit more crime. Mm. Well, you're 13% of the population, but you commit all these crimes. Yeah, because we're overly impoverished, constantly policed instead of given breathing room. Never given the economic opportunity to just grow as a society because you've blocked us off from housing, uh, and proper education. Hell, now, it's what... Hey, everybody, this is Matt. Yeah, it's what hey, they Matt. used to... Hey, guys! Hey. Hey. It's, what they used to, it's what they used to refer to as institutionalized racism. Now it's referred to as systematic ra racism. But regardless, mm -hmm. it's, it's the constant uh, uh, overhang that we go ahead and we push on minority groups that goes ahead and keeps them constantly down. That's why... Like I was explaining before, that more black males are incarcerated in America than white males, except they take up 13% uh, of the population. Mm -hmm. So, in that instance, why is that? So you have to ask yourself, there's really two questions. One, is it a mass conspiracy where they're more likely to go ahead and be incarcerated by judges and authority figures? Or are black males more inclined to commit crimes? Then you have to ask the secondary question on top of that. Why would they be inclined? Systematic racism. It's a revolving cycle that periodically pushes down and forces mm. literally people to never be able to get out of the fucking hole. Mm. Exactly. That makes exactly. sense. Okay. Wow. Um, so with the last little bit here, well, it's not quite last little bit. We still have a little bit more than a half hour. I did want to ask you guys... Um, just, I know it's a topic change a bit, but what, what would you guys like, what, what would be some, uh, I don't know, some, some, some ways that you guys think are, would be the most, uh, like productive towards seeing change? Like what would, what would be the main striking points? Attempt to answer that. I actually have a question for you guys. Sure. Uh, uh, this is mainly for you, Kim, and for Matt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you guys are not black, um, but I know you all understand what is happening, and you understand why it's wrong. When yeah. you see these kind of injusti injustices, what are you more inclined to do, and can you actually tell us what most white people would be inclined to do and why. Because okay. that is a side, that is a culture I, I really don't know. I make fun of it all day long because I'm an asshole. <laughs> but, I'm, I'm sorry, when I talk about unflavored food, I say it's white folk food. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. But, but being serious, how do you guys handle injustices? How, does, how do other white folk handle injustices? And 
where where do you think there's a disparity you know disparity where 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 okay. where how do how do how how do y'all exist under the same racial banner as the other white folk how do you get them to understand how do you guys plan to bridge the gap how could you mm. you understand what i'm saying yeah well, first first thing is first um sorry i Jumping in, Matt, blah blah blah, because I'm taking five minutes for my D and D game. <laughs> um, I think there's with uh, white America. I think there's there's a tendency for bystander mentality. So you see the oppression, and you see you you see it firsthand. I'm from Miami. I'm from an inner city. You would see it all the fucking time. Oh, yeah. and um, there's that bystander mentality from a lot of uh, male uh, uh, white folks, where it's like. Well, if it's not them, it's going to be me. Mm-hmm. I mean, black people and too. So yeah. there's this tendency for them to stand on the sidelines and be terrified that if, you know, if change comes about, you know, will it be them? That's and I know this sounds ridiculous and silly, but they are terrified that to a certain extent that if it's not somebody else being oppressed, then it may be them mm-hmm. because... They know what they're capable of. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. See, so, I had a very interesting conversation with a friend of mine, Hassan, who was just like, hey, one of the worst things that happens to a very much wealthy, uh, affluent Caucasian person is not being oppressed because they feel as though it's somehow like wrong of them to not be able to say, well, you know, everyone has, it, uh, has a rough time because, you know, if everyone's not having a rough time, that they might be focused on. And that kind of resonated with me because it's exactly what you just said there. I didn't mean to interrupt my fault. Like, it Not. resonated perfectly. Yeah, it's that's that's the honest reason why people are prone to inaction, at least on our side of the gate. Then you have people like me who's just been screaming about uh, any sort of thing that I see that's unfair mm. since I've been 16 years old. So, And I've gotten in a lot of trouble, but you know what? It's trouble that's well worth it. Um, oh, I appreciate that. I, I have to say, mm-hmm. I do have to say, considering the amount of, like, rednecks and make America great again folk that you I do see out here, and there are a lot, I've never been so damn proud mm-hmm. of some people in this community, especially the music community around here. Y'all have gone to bat for us hardcore this time around, and it has mm-hmm. to be re- it has to be recognized. Because the thing about the concept of white privilege, like we were talking about earlier, is at the end of the day, y'all do not have to do a damn thing. You can walk away. Matt, mm-hmm. we were talking about this very briefly earlier. You can walk away. You, I understand that you are morally compelled to not do that because you're not a piece of shit and I appreciate this. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, black issues do not actually directly affect white folk. They can walk away at any time, and a lot of them do. And the fact that y'all have not makes me so fucking proud. It really does. Oh, yeah. I, I appreciate that. But I will go so far as to say that I, I see where you're coming from, and I understand that in the end, at the end of the day, we don't really have to do anything. But let's be honest. We're a community, and we're a society, and you know, we're like fucking civilized human beings. In theory, well, together. <laughs> if you, uh, if you, uh, if you did nothing, like you, I know you don't have to, but in a sense, we really need to feel that compulsion that we have to. That mm-hmm. it has to be something that we do. It's not fair. Like when things are, it's yeah, you should be driven to action. Like it's it's an injustice. Like you are raised on Marvel movies that are told that tell you that injustice is like the worst thing, and you can sit idly by and watch it happen. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't live with myself. I could not sleep at night if I didn't do something, anything. Mm. A friend of mine, uh, he came over yesterday after work because he was just like exhausted. And he just wanted to like hang out and talk. And I told him I was going to the protest uh, in Coco tomorrow. Yeah. And he was just like, I can't go, man. Like, I got to take care of you. I got to take care of my girlfriend everything. Like, she just had surgery. Like, her body. Oh. Wow. Like, she needs to be taken care of. She can't move her neck and back. So, like, I understand. So, I didn't get on that. It was like, I understand. Like, why do you feel so compelled to go? And I'm like, bro, I, 
I couldn't, I would not be able to face my children in the future if I ever said I stood fucking still right now. Like, I, I couldn't. I'd feel ashamed. I would honestly be ashamed of myself if I went. I didn't do anything. They didn't take care of it. Like, why would I leave this to somebody else when I could help join in the fight? Yeah. Like, but. Yeah, it's. Like, that's why. We're all responsible. When says all lives matter, I'm like, dude, you're right. All lives do matter. So come fucking join. Yeah. But, oh, so, oh, I have a quick question, though. Because yeah. I, I saw this article. Let's go. And I wanted to know, in your personal opinion, when did civil, uh, civilized society first start? Um, that's a good question. It seems tricky because it's, it always, I believe it feels like when we're in, when we're in the present, we always feel like it's civilized and we can look back at the past and see times in which it was less. But I think the more we keep moving into the future, the, the the more we look back and, and always see how we've gotten how we've made more progress towards being more mindful and aware and we were less civilized uh, so I think it, it fluctuates well I I'm talking about society or civilization civilization okay because yeah society I would say when the first three humans congregated in the same cave but um, for civilization I'll say the first time that we really started to use tools. Mm -hmm. The time that we elevated from being packs of animals to being actual civilized structures. So and a um, very, very interesting answer where you said when we stopped being animals, because that's very similar to the interesting answer that I got. Please do continue. Oh, no, no, I, that's, that's where I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it the first time we used tools and branched mm -hmm. out from, yeah, from, and, uh, go ahead, go ahead. about the presence of, uh, the reason why people hate trans people, like, it's so, oh, yeah. it's the God's fucking, in the world. it's literally the dumbest thing, but yeah. it like, happens. Who cares? Yeah. And who cares the what they, like, they feel like a woman inside, they want their outside to match their inside. Yeah. Are they fucking you? No, and mind your goddamn business. <laughs> Like, it pisses so, me off so much when someone's like, man, fuck these weird-ass F-words. What <laughs> raised you like this? But yeah, they probably they, need to put you back in the womb and fix you, goddammit. People feel that way because <laughs> they're, by, they're, by, they're terrified of progression. It's oh, fearful. Yeah. No, I've they never thought that's right before. Because sometimes archaic views are hard to get rid of and they don't want to be left behind by society. Which is why so many people who are like, I'm just an old man and I don't get this. And it's like, I get that part, but you are human. You have an obligation not only to yourself, but to your children that you will be leaving behind to continuously progress as a human. Yeah. But well, you're, given, you're given the tools mentally to, you know, progress technologically, physically, as well as mentally. You can have yeah. a mental progression and wrap your brain yes. around the idea that somebody might be born the wrong gender. Yes. Um, like yeah, a fucking bunch of X and Y chromosomes at the end of the video. You know? I, th I think that mental progression is exactly the most delayed process in, in human beings. I think that oh, yeah. it's yeah, it's the one in which if when when um, when Izzy was asking how what, what how would we really get, you know, promote change or, or get people, um, you know, from speaking from white people's point of view, like, get them uh, to, to really get behind this and understand that that was sort of my take on it was, um, was mental health, was thinking, I, I think about the mental health aspect. And then I think about how, if, if people are crying out for help, the most important thing to do is to See, is so to what? ask them, yeah, to, to seek to, to, to understand them first before we sit here and ask them to understand what we're saying because they're the ones saying they need help. Yes. So, yeah. I, I, I have a few examples of, it, of this, but let me, yeah. let me get back to the point that we were talking about with civilization. The yeah. interesting answer that I got yeah. was, uh, it was from a scholar years ago where she said that the first signs of a civilized society were not when we first developed our tools because, yes, we could have tools and still be uncivilized because hit one the first signs of civilized society was not when we first learned to mend a broken leg but the first signs of civilized society yeah. was when yeah. we first not only mended the leg but kept 
the person with the broken leg that is healing safe during its process. Hmm. Because when animals have a wounded creature at the back of their pack, they leave it at the back as uh, something to be sacrificed towards its enemies. Like animals, like uh, lions will go attack their wildebeest in the back because it's old, slow, and weak. They'll kill that one. Yeah. But they'll protect the young, healthy bucks in the front and in the center of the pack to ensure that they have a future left behind. That is not civilized. It is respectable that they're preserving their future, but that's still animalistic. But once you're like, I'm not only going to make sure this person is better, but I'm going to ensure that they are safe while they recover, that is when you have a civilized society because mm. you're starting to value every last one of your people. You're not having a sacrificial lamb. Yeah. And that is incredibly important. Yeah, that's, I can understand, yeah, I can see that. It, it, it takes away from the, that whole, what was it, the, the Darwinism idea of just letting the, the weakest sort just of... Just let the weak die. Yeah, that's, that's very animalistic based, and we're supposed to be more, um, as human beings, we're supposed to be a step above that, because we have the capability to be aware, self-aware. Mm-hmm. Wow. And the reason why I went to that point is because... There was a quote by Malcolm X yes. when he was on a TV program <laughs> discussing uh, the aspect of reparations and mm. how can one possibly make up for the horrific crimes of slavery and the injustices. Yeah. And he said that it is impossible to even have this discussion if one is even unwilling to admit that the knife was there. Because in order to have this conversation and mm -hmm. move forward, we, could, we need to have a discussion on what real pro uh, progress on this subject is. Because progress in, on this subject does not mean, oh, I'm taking the knife out slowly. Because mm -hmm. you could consider progress taking the knife out an inch or two. I, it's still in me. I'm still hurting. The blade is still there. So this is not progress. Yeah. If you want to progress on this subject, you can't just take it out of the inches. You can't force it further in. No. It's already at its hilt. You've already done the apex. You've already enslaved someone. Mm. So if you want to actually have progress in of race and racial healing in America, not only must you remove the blade completely, but you must treat me civilly. And as a real society and civilization, you must not only help me heal, but you must help preserve my existence as I heal. Therefore, mm -hmm. we will actually be civilized at that point again, because at this moment in time, because one, the healing process has never even happened, because most people don't even want to admit that the blade was even there. Yeah. So until we not only admit the blade is there, not, uh, not only must we get to the blade is there and that we're pulling it completely out, but we, we desperately need people understand the issue to stay there and assist in the healing process. That way, black society will actually have the ability to get from underneath the oppressive regime of white supremacy that mm -hmm. some people might not even realize they exist in mm -hmm. to actually get themselves to a point where they're not no longer impoverished, continuously incarcerated, and looked at as other. And once that happens, we'll have made actual progress on actually achieving equality in America again. Yeah, that's a that's a really good note for us to. We've got only a few minutes left, but that's a really good note to to kind of keep it on. Did, Izzy, did you have anything you wanted to contribute to that? Um, pretty much the only closing thing I'm going to remind everybody that happens to listen is stuff that I'm pretty sure everybody already knows. The the only way that we're ever going to be able to overcome this particular issue is if to some degree we are seen as equal. Not identical, yeah, uh, but equal. Yeah. One of the worst things that I think someone can say, and they don't mean it, they don't mean anything bad, is I don't see color. Yeah. Oh, God, I hate that. <laughs> this, I, 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 I understand, I understand the sentiment. I do. Yeah. But here's the thing. Don't ignore my color. My color is part of who I am, just like everything else, yeah, mm -hmm. that is ignoring a that is ignoring a part of who I am. Be the color, just don't hate me for it. Teach that, teach that to the next yeah. generation. 
Yeah. We all have our differences. And there's it absolutely own them, embrace them, flaunt them. Cause shit, you're stuck with them anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I feel that that to some folks, the well, I don't see color. I know where the sentiment is, but the color still exists whether you choose to see it or not. And mm-hmm. those that have a certain shade of color are still in much more danger, and that has to be recognized. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. I I no, for everything that I am a photographer obsessed with pop music. And it's really, really, really unhealthy. Um, <laughs> as long as it's not K-pop. Huh? As long as it's not K-pop. Because the K-pop stands to be wild. <laughs> they're, a little, they're a little nuts. No, no, no. Like, I, I listen to things. And that's another thing. It's As far as stereotypes are concerned, I tend to operate outside of certain black stereotypes. My hair is usually in like bright crochet braids. And mm-hmm. I hang out with a bunch of, you know, white, you know, rockers, and I take pictures of them, and, you know, um, I'm openly queer, openly poly, openly non-binary, yeah. um, but I'm still black. Yeah. I'm still black. No matter I, no matter what the hell else is about me, I am still black, but it's still part of who I am. Those experiences, that pigmentation is still an identifier of who I am as a human being. Yep. Don't yes. fucking ignore that just because it's convenient. Mm-hmm. See the color, recognize that the discrimination against the color exists, and then embrace me. Yeah. Don't yeah. try and embrace me without embracing all of me. Otherwise, you go away. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you're no good to me. And that that applies for every person of color. Mm-hmm. The black experience is different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and listen to everybody that claims to have that black experience, except for Rachel Dolezal. She need to go sit down somewhere. <laughs> She's, she is no longer part of the racial draft. If that ever happens, and Dave Chappelle's full idea ever happens. Taking fucking Eminem, I don't care what anyone says. Taking M, and fucking making J Cole doubly black. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be a whole bunch of real ass people who are going to be indoctrinated. That is definitely part of the cookout. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Yeah. This man is in the cookout. Who yeah. is? Matt. Of course, Matt. Matt is right to the cookout. Of course. Matt is. He literally hosts the motherfucker. Matt, Matt is in this shit. Kim's in the cookout. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, in the cookout. Fuck everybody up. Y'all take Candace Owens. White folk, I'm sorry. Y'all gotta have Candace. She's yeah, not we don't, with us. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't want her no more. <laughs> that's not with us, man. I can't even call her sister. That's, that's literally Uncle Ruckus. Let's all be real. <laughs> 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 Uncle Ruckus? Oh, my God. That is <laughs> Uncle Ruckus if I've ever seen a person in drag. Like, sorry. <laughs> uh, don't even know Lord. how to do her goddamn makeup right. My soul just ascended, man. <laughs> Jesus. She got a whole bunch of attitude. What you doing, girl? <laughs> so, that, and, and that's the thing. We, when we say, when we say invited to the cookout, that's basically your your honorary black card. You're not black, and you're never going to be black. Okay. But yeah, you can come. You can come hang oh, out. Oh, part of the cookout. Yeah, also Sweet. The other part of the cookout. When we huh? say you're invited to the cookout, when we're out in the streets protesting. And a cop beats our ass, and then all of a sudden, some shit's on fire. That's the cookout. <laughs> that is the cookout. <laughs> oh no. That's, That's the cookout. Wow. When we burn it shit. I'm sorry, and I don't. I don't condone rioting, as they keep wanting to constantly talk about. Even though there's no rioting that's happening in five yeah. days. But if you don't fuck with me, your shit gonna burn. I'm sorry. Mm. And this is the thing. I don't want that for you guys. I don't want that for anybody. Mm. I recognize the fact that everybody's just trying to live. And no, I don't want to necessarily grab all my white friends and be like, listen, let's go let's go start a revolution. I understand. People out here tired, especially in 2020. But yeah. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we will never ever achieve racial equality and break down systemic racism yeah. without white folk. And the thing is, y'all have all the power. Politically, y'all have most of the money. Mm-hmm. So even if we didn't care for your sentiment, which we do, yeah. even if we didn't care for your sentiment, we can't do that without your actual like this ability to change laws. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we have to have the people of the Caucasian persuasion on our side. Otherwise, we're going to go nowhere quickly. Mm-hmm. And that's which just is, the long and short of it. Mm-hmm. One of the most beautiful things I've seen is out in all these protests. There's so many people of all the different races and creeds. Like, literally, there's a global... When I say yeah. there's a global... I shit you not. Everywhere in the civilized world, 
there is a protest. Yeah. Songs, uh, it's not even in just civilized world. There was a group of Mennonites, like Amish folk, mm -hmm. of whom are disconnected from technology. I don't even know how the fuck they found out. <laughs> somebody, yeah. somebody likely went to their went to their uh, went to their community and told them, and they made signs and came out and marched for the injustice of what happened to George Floyd. When yes. people who literally cannot connect to the modern world are out here going, uh, -uh that's not cool. Yeah. Listen. The crazy part is, is like they're like, oh my god, the Amish are so backwards. They live in a backward society. These people from a backwards society that you claim are literally saying, what you're doing to people is fucked up. What are you doing? Yeah. Right. That's backwards thinking. What the hell are y'all doing? Yeah. When you're I, being told by people who literally say phones are evil. Nigga, <laughs> what the fuck did you do? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and the thing is, we I really do think we are going to see some progress. Oh. But... We are going to see... This, they have no choice. They, this round, they have no choice. But the thing that I also hate are people hyper-focused on George Floyd himself for the... For, they're like, oh, no, 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 this is about George Floyd. Has this been about George Floyd? No. This is... George Floyd was the final straw. Yeah. That was the final straw. That man's death was fucking disastrous. Gasping for air, crying for his mother to be just allowed to live, left behind a six-year-old daughter that he did not want to leave. Yeah. That man just wanted to live his life, and they snuffed it out with an illegal... Because I worked for a company called Devero for multiple years. Oh, oh really? Think, yeah. One of the first things they, told, they taught you was that if a child there is on their stomach and laying, you legally cannot put your weight on them or hold them. You're not able to do it because police officers, uh, nurses, and people for multiple years. Oh, oh really? They, yeah. One of the first things they told, they taught you was that if a child there is on their stomach and laying, you legally cannot put your weight on them or hold them. You're not able to do it because police officers, uh, nurses, and people with the mentally and criminally insane had done that hold and caused asphyxiation. So they had multiple lawsuits about it. You yeah. are not legally able to hold your weight on a person prone because it causes asphyxia. Police officers have lost this case and they still continue to do it because they understand they have plausible deniability and also multiple other bullshit ass programs in order to allow for them to use excessive force without any sort of repercussions. Yeah. No, yeah, I was wondering about that hold. I, no, yeah, I was wondering about that hold. I, that was something I was thinking in particular was, was, oh, that's a was that, that... That's just straight up a murder hold. Anyone from MMA will tell you, you're never supposed to put that kind of weight on the neck. That's just trying to literally cause permanent damage or death. Yeah. That is not a, oh, I'm trying to restrain. No, that's not a restraint. That is a, that, that's a death hold. That, that's that's wow. a choke hold trying to kill someone. You're, that's a blood choke. You are literally cutting blood off from the brain, mm -hmm. cutting off oxygen from the muscles, so they're not able to resist, and they're not able to function. So they die painfully and slowly, unable to respirate, and having their brain literally die of oxygen de uh, deprivation and blood deprivation. Mm, wow. You are a monster if you go, well, it's not that bad. The second that happens, I'm sorry, you won't fun out to see me. Yeah. Right. At that point, you're not only uninvited to the cookout. I'm gonna put your ass on the grill. <laughs> nah, I don't. I don't. Yes. I don't play that game. And we and, gotta eat. We're gonna give you the uncle fucking Roy Roy. We already know what that dude. Mm. <laughs> I can't stand you. <laughs> I can't stand you. But the the thing is, the the best explanation regarding what's happening and what yeah. to do from here is. Because I know that that's a question a lot of white folk are, 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 are wondering. They're yes. like, yes. it's wrong, we don't like it, but we're afraid to do something because we don't want to take over the narrative. Yeah. And I, I honor that and I respect that. Fuck it, take over the narrative from me, goddamn. <laughs> right, because <laughs> we tired. We tired out here. I, uh, Killer Mike actually had a very good take on this. He was on, a, he was on an ESPN show with Shannon Sharp and uh, Skip Bayless. Who, Skip Bayless? Also invited to the cookout. Fuck anybody that has to say otherwise. Uh, yeah. That, uh, he was saying how he was tired of having to handhold, and I don't mean this in offense to any of my Caucasian, but yeah. love you. He said, I'm tired of having to handhold white people. 
We're tired of having to tell you everything's okay. We're tired of having to constantly go, it's fine if that person's a little bit racist. No, we cannot be the ones educating you because you just need to hear it from someone that like you exactly why this sort of issue continues to permeate your society. Yes. You need to be able to educate one another on this exact subject in order to allow for it to progress because sometimes you need to hear it from and I know yeah. earlier on you were discussing what solutions would we propose in order to actually progress in the situation yeah. and the NAACP brought out a list that actually is pretty much on point of all the different things that we truly do need Okay. because I don't know if you know the police budget for LA, but it's three billion fucking dollars. Mm. Wow, all three the other billion. Mm-hmm. All the other ones combined make up for about a twenty million. Wow, that's, my that's... Fault. no, 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 not one hundred twenty million. Five hundred twenty. Five hundred twenty million. Wow. Oh, less than my fault. Three hundred twenty million. My bad. But literally fractions. So when they said we're taking one hundred and fifty million from the NYPD and LAPD in order to put forward these other programs that will help. Yeah. What they're saying is, well, here's 0.15% of the total budget that we don't give a fuck about. Yeah. Deal with it. And it's like, that, that, that that's not going to help. That That's not going to help at all. We need to demilitarize the police. They mm-hmm. don't need tear gas we because don't. that's banned in war. You're not allowed to use that on, on citizens. It's already banned by the Geneva Convention. Get that shit out of here. So that needs to go. That's one. Two, we need the immediate defunding of police. And I don't mean like take away every last bit of their uh, finances. No, we still need them for the transitionary period. But we need to get away from centralized policing where people from a different community are coming into your community and then they're allowed to do as they please amongst your people. You don't feel comfortable with that idea, so don't do that to people. So instead, you need to ba- uh, fund community-based policing. Okay. And by community-based policing, you mean if you're going to be a cop in this area, you need to live in this area. You need to, the ratio of people in the police force needs to be approximate to the people living in that area. So if you yes. have a very mixed society, you should have mixed police. Why the fuck am I seeing things like cops approaching people freaking what they call the ghetto? What the yeah. Why is Officer Duval showing up at freaking J- Jamal's house asking him what the hell's going on? Tip ready to be fired in the chest. That don't make me feel sick. That won't make him feel He don't about this shit. That doesn't make him feel sick. Yeah. You should have somebody like me keep someone that lives in vacuum. Somebody that understands them as a part of their society helping to police it because community-based policing yes. does wonders because guess what where you see the least amount of crime the cops are very much invested in community and that yes. white community lots of the have family members they go you feel safe as a or your dad's a or some of it like you feel safe as a because they're not a threat to you yeah because yes. you know you've seen them but if i was still down in fort lauderdale in miami and i hooligan shit, I would not feel at all comfortable with some person I'd never seen before approaching me with weapons yep. after seeing multiple stories of people who look like him trying to fucking kill me. Yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. You wouldn't feel comfortable with that. Because a lot of people who happen to be Caucasian are very terrified of the idea of these protesters turning into rioters and assaults going, I need my second amendment because they're scaring me. Yeah, yeah. that's how we feel about fucking cops. Yeah, you know, in in a way, I wondered if if on some subconscious level that it's the protesters want to that they want to empathize and so for I mean not the ones that are sitting here being like oh give me my you know my Second Amendment but I, I wonder if there's some push inside of them that really just wants to to to, to kind of relate more. I don't know. That could be completely mm-hmm. wrong. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong in the sense that they want to be able to relate more, but the way I see All Lives Matter people is more it's like, why the fuck are you not oppressing me so I can complain about oppression? Mm. Because that's what they want. They want to be able to claim, oh, well, we suffer too. And it's like, yeah, we understand that. Everybody has a rough time. Right now, this house is on fire. Though. Yeah. So, like, the entire block could go up in flames. But right now, 
this house is on fire. So can we put out this fire before we talk about, you know, neighbor Nancy? Can we put yeah. out this house first? Can we put out house one on the corner instead of going to house eight saying all houses matter? Because that's what all lives matter is. It's like, oh, this house is on fire. All houses matter. So I'm going to sprinkle some water on this one that ran. Like, I don't go yeah. up to people who have cancer and say, what do you got? Breast cancer. All cancers matter. And then walk away like I said, some shit that's profound. Yeah. Well, fuck yourself. You think like that. If, I, if they want to believe that shit on 9-11, I'm going to look around and say all buildings matter and see how fast I get down. Yeah, it, it generalizes and takes away from the topic at hand. Exactly. So if you want to be like, oh, all lives matter, of course all lives fucking matter. Yeah. So if all lives matter, let's go out onto the street and protest police killings of innocent white men, innocent Latino men, innocent everyone. Because cops should not be killing anyone that's innocent. They shouldn't be abusing anyone that's in prison. They shouldn't be raping any freaking prostitutes, which happens yeah. extremely high in amounts, which is disgusting. You yeah. shouldn't be out here saying all lives matter if you don't believe in demilitarizing the Middle East, where we're literally bombing people still. There's still Afghani uh, children going, I like when days are cloudy, because then the bombs don't fucking drop. Mm. Oh my you God. shouldn't have people yeah. saying that. Yeah. So if you think all lives matter, then get the fuck off your ass and start acting like all lives fucking matter. Very true. Very true. I, I do like that okay. idea of the community, the police, like a, you know, in a community. That that I can see that helping a lot with the fear. That's I do like that okay. idea of the community, the police, like a, you know, in a community. That that I can see that helping a lot with the fear that's causing a lot of this. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm kind of of the mind at this point. Mm -hmm. You are either going to need to stand with this stand with this movement, mm -hmm. so we are all equal, or you're going to need to get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. Yes. That that is what it's become. It used to be I would prefer you stand with this movement, but if not, I respect your right. Nope, not anymore. Your yeah. right if when your rights basically infringe on my existence, yeah. you got to go. You yes. out. Yeah. I'm done. Yes. So th listen, right now, right in this moment, black lives are what we're worried about. Black lives matter. If they don't matter to you, get out. Get out, mm -hmm. or you're finna be trampled. Mm -hmm. That's that's basically what's gonna happen. For the first life, time in my life, I move on without them, and they're gonna be I like, am... "Why is everyone leaving me behind?" Yeah. Because you're thinking archaically, because you've been taught by people. Okay. Yeah. It sounds really backwards a little bit, but I, I think one of my favorite news hosts says that said that we never should have had to know George Floyd's name because he shouldn't have had to die. Exactly. Right. Honestly, I'm mad as hell that. We did not continue to protest after Trayvon Martin's death, and especially after George yeah. King Zimmer. Because the disgusting aspect of this is that we're looking at one. I had fucking co workers who were like, well, he shouldn't have been going to that neighborhood. Suspicious. And I said, one, it was his stepmom's neighborhood, so it's his neighborhood. That's one. Yeah. Two, if you're a community officer who is on patrol, uh, citizen patrol, all that shit, whatever. B list piece of shit. You cannot carry a weapon. Yeah. The fact that he carried a weapon is illegal. He could not have carried a weapon. He was not legally able to. Yeah. That's wow. one. Two, because Trayvon literally was going to someone's home there, he should have just fell back. But instead he kept trying to approach Trayvon. Trayvon doesn't know who the fuck you are. You're literally constantly asking him questions and he does have an obligation to talk to you. You're not an officer. Yeah. You didn't have an obligation to talk to fucking officers. So yeah. why the fuck did Zord Zimmerman have the ability in the eyes of the court to not only attempt to apprehend an innocent child going to their fucking house with Skittles in his pocket mm -hmm. and then had the goal after basically stalking and assaulting him by touching him. So when Trayvon fights back, he's like, well, just got my ass whooped, whips out his gun after being the person who initiated the uh, altercation and fires multiple shots into him. And they're like, yeah, this is legal. That literally should have been the spark that instigated the entire thing of demilitarizing police forces, getting rid of neighborhood watchmen, mm -hmm. and just have community-based policing. That way you won't have the situation of some overzealous wannabe cop going, what the fuck you doing here? Because yeah. the person that's living there would have known he fucking lived there. Very true, yeah. Yeah. And... 
I, I, all I all I know at this point is whether black folks are talking about it or not, no matter how angry they are, no matter how much they're ready for a revolution, we're scared out here. Yeah. We are. We are scared. Not everybody's talking about it because we understand that talking about our fears can be seen as a weakness or an advantage to white supremacists. But fuck, I'm tired. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm terrified. Benjamin Dixon, he's a journalist and a podcast person. Mm-hmm. He, he speaks about the important relevance of the Second Amendment to black society because before uh, the NRA decided to attempt to make it a crime to be black and own it, and uh, literally the, the NRA was f- pro-gun control for African Americans during the Reagan administration. Reagan attempted to ban guns, yeah. which is fucking crazy. But uh, yeah, they're just like, oh, no, 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 you know, mm-hmm. black people did. Look, the Second Amendment is for every last citizen. If you ever feel like you're being threatened by these motherfuckers, I'm going to just straight up say this. I am careful that yeah. one day somebody might fucking try to kill me. But I also understand that if I'm ever in a position where I think someone's going to kill me, I can guarantee you I'm either going to kill you first or I'm going to beat your ass as you're killing me. Because I'm not going to just sit there and die. I'm yeah. not Martin. I'm sorry. His nonviolent protest, beautiful. But if you really want to know the truth... Martin Luther King Jr.'s pro- uh, nonviolent protest, that was not the thing that passed the Civil Rights Bill. In 1964, when the Civil Rights Bill was passed, we were not still considered citizens of the United States of America, so we were not protected by the Civil Rights Bill. It wasn't mm-hmm. until uh, June 19, 1965, a year later, that we were considered human underneath the Constitution of the United States of America and were actually allowed to be con- uh uh, actually allowed to have said rights there. But they were still were not fully activated until 1968 after the assassination of John F. Kennedy, where mm. Lyndon B. Johnson signed in the second Civil Rights Act that uh, housed the actual responsibilities of the Housing Rights Act mm-hmm. and allowed black people to actually own property and therefore they were not a second class citizen. And that's when you truly came. That's when we were truly American. That's mm. when we were truly citizen. But because of states' rights, they still were not allowed to actually do any uh, do anything about it. Because states' rights prevented you from actually, you know, existing in Arkansas. So not until about the early 1970s did you fully get considered everywhere in the U.S. a actual citizen of the United States of America. Actually, wow. and even then, we just went from, well, you're just a second class citizen to all right, police state. Of- and then you have this cocaine insurgents agency of, uh, of the CIA bringing the drug war to America. And mm. then you have marijuana's evil, cocaine, send these blacks to jail, the private indi- uh, the prison industrial complex. All that shit was literally created the moment after Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in 1968. We rioted for six fucking days after he was assassinated before they signed that uh, bill completely giving us rights. Wow. So if you really want the facts on facts, peaceful protests do not exist. It's called nonviolent protests, where you yourself are nonviolent. Peaceful protests exist when both sides are peaceful. You can't be peaceful mm. and someone else not be peaceful. You're nonviolent. They're uh, aggressive. When yeah. Both sides are peaceful. Then it's peaceful. And since you can't know that here, get yeah. Since you can't know that till uh, you can't know that a, a protest was peaceful till it's over. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah, and there's too much provocation going on. It, it, it's sort of like it makes it makes a lot more sense. And, you know, if people are attempting something peaceful and then they're getting provoked uh, by the police, I mean, they, they have every right to, to, to get outraged. It, it's kind of hard to, to tell them to stay silent and further get trampled on. I would never advocate for someone to be like, run up and punch that cop. No, that's dumb. Never do that. Yeah. But if the cop is like... Yo, I'm just gonna kill you, blah, 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 blah. Do your best to just ignore that motherfucker's place. You can't. He's trying to bait you. Because, right, these cops are literally out there trying to bait you into doing something so that way they have an excuse to begin quality on innocent people. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm seeing, for sure. So what you want to do in that situation is, like, if a citizen comes up to you on that shit, oh, second amendment their ass right now. But if a police officer's on that bullshit, cord their ass, prove that they're violent, show them that you're not violent, and then let the juxtaposition be the evidence in order to expand your movement and get more people on your side. That True. way, in the future, these cops have to realize that they can't be doing this bullshit, and we can get this done civilly. 
but if they refuse to do it civilly, I bet. Wow, yeah. You know, that's a really good, that's a good way to put it. Um, what do you think, uh, Izzy? I, um... <sighs> Sorry, I've been... I've been listening and just kind of taking all of this information in, and yeah, I I don't know how this is going to turn out. I, I yeah. don't, and I'm not talking about just the protests tomorrow. I don't know how long these uh, demonstrations are going to last until we see real change. I don't know if I don't know if we're all going to make it to the other side. I really don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's already been dead. There have been. And there are more coming. And it is eventually going to get to a point where it is going to reach our home floors. It is going to come right up to our doorstep. Yeah. I just, all I can hope for at this point, excuse me, all I can hope for at this point is that should something not happen to me, I can get the word out. And if something does happen to me, I want to make sure it is on record. Yeah. Do not let anybody tell you I did. I wanted peace. Do not let anybody tell you I didn't want protests. I didn't want riots. I didn't want looting. The the civil rights movement could not have occurred without riots and looters. Yeah. Yes, I understand. I don't. I don't advocate for property destruction. Yeah. However, they are a part of the history. Shit has to get ugly. Yeah. Okay. Um. The. Uh, Queer rights would not exist without a black trans person. Mm -hmm. And riots. They threw bricks at cops and cop cars and smashed their windows and made hell. Yeah. So, should something happen to me, grieve, make sure my husband is okay, and then burn it all. <laughs> burn it to the burn it to the ground. Yeah. And make sure that my name is spoken because God knows, though most of those other folks that have died at the hands of police brutality did not get the chance to state what they really wanted. They didn't get a yeah. chance to live as they were. Yeah. So, I, for the first time in my life, I've actually been talking to folks like, listen, I don't think some shit's going to go down, but if it does, yeah, this is what I want, and this is what I want to see happen, and I love you, and please be safe. Yeah. I, I woke up this morning realizing that I really, I really could die at any time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I, I have could die. I have. And then you look at just the deaths overall. Yeah. Like, the one that gets me more than anything is Tamir Rice. Mm. Tamir Rice was a young, young boy playing with, playing with a toy gun. Mm. And he was gunned down by police. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. like it, it hurts when these hap when these things happen to the armored armories and the George Floyds and the Sandra Blands, but mm -hmm. the Trayvons and the Tamirs, yeah, the young ones who didn't even get to be adults. Come on, man. Yeah. At least do it for the kids. Yeah. I I I literally me and my husband literally made the decision partially to not have children to raise them in a world like this because half black is still black. Yeah. Yep. And I don't think I could stomach losing a child. If you ever want to see an interesting experiment on black being black, look up the brown and blue eyes experiment. And you Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Because you will understand there's a man there that has dread speaks to how he has a quarter black child that is passable for white and he is terrified of the idea of going to pick her up from school. Because, guess what? She might be looked at differently after they find out that she has a half dead. dad. Wow. He is terrified of that. And so he does not go to his daughter's school to fucking get her. Wow. That's terrifying. Sad. Yeah. You have to literally not see your child after school. She's gonna have a phenomenal day. She might see you immediately and tell you. But you are so self-conscious. Yeah, go to some of us take for granted. Yeah. 
you can't go to a daughter or father day at work. Like, yeah. Oh, cool. You can't do that shit. Because you're like, oh crap, this fancy ass school is going to realize that my daughter lied. Yeah. And next thing you know, they're going to start treating her like she's a piece of crap. Yeah. Well. Well, um, if you guys want to do this again, um, we can set up again for another, I think next Friday actually work a closing, but we can all get in touch again and do it again. Um, I'm down. Yeah, I, I can see there's like right, definitely a lot uh, more we could probably bring to another one. We're about, we're at about two and a half hours on this one. So if Ooh, it's boy. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that always <laughs> So if it's cool, if we wrap it up here. Um, but I, I really appreciate you guys coming on here, and, and, and um, I hope I, I, I did a good job here giving you guys some... I wanted really to, to make sure I asked questions to, to really seek understanding and to get to know you guys' perspective of what's been going on, and just just really get some... You know, I feel like we got some really good um, conversations going as well. And, and, and that's one thing, constant discussion yeah. about things like racism and discrimination and homophobia, transphobia, any sort of bigotry, we can't we can't solve a problem we don't talk about. Yep. Exactly. And and so Kim, I really want to thank you for opening this discussion up and grabbing two people of color and openly asking questions. Openly yeah. admitting that you have stuff to learn. There's nothing wrong with not knowing the information. We can mm -hmm. all learn and get through this together. The problem is when you've learned the information and refuse to do anything with yeah. it, which I know you ain't going to do. I know you're going to share the hell out of this episode and talk yep. to folks and get folks to open a discussion. And we're going to keep doing that no matter what ugliness we face. And that makes you an ally. And God, we need that. We really yeah. do. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm happy to help. I just felt like it was I did the right thing to, to really do. And, and it just... I keep thinking to myself, how can people best contribute with the talents or the skills or the, the things that they have? And and to me, I mean, I mean, I might have like my health issues right now, but I'm like, you know, I can get on here and can have a good discussion. So. And, and see, that's the thing. Do not also do not allow folks, regardless of skin tone, to gatekeep you either. We mm -hmm. are still in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. People still have health issues. People are still unemployed. People still have other things they have to get done, even with a race war in their backyard. So mm -hmm. I'm not mad at folks that aren't coming out to protest or do whatever. It's dangerous. Yeah. I understand the risk that I signed up for, and I'm not going to ask everybody to do that. But just discussions in your own home, in your own community, is a great place to start. Yeah, like you said. yeah exactly. Alrighty, guys. So thank you so much for coming on here. Um, just before I just before I wrap up, did you guys when I post a podcast episode, did you want me to link to anything in there for social medias or anything like that for you guys, or what? How much information do you want me to be able to provide? Um, I have no problem with you revealing my name, my photo, whatever. Okay. Um, you can link to my profile. You can link. I I would prefer you link to my uh, my photography information. Okay. Um. Uh. My photo information, especially since I'm gonna have pictures from the protest. Okay. But, yeah. Are you gonna um, in the Coco? Yes. Hey. Um, I've actually been talking to the organizers. Um, me and a friend of mine are the only two freelance photographers that have agreed to shoot this event. Well, oh, that still works. She is a nurse, and she's gonna be marching with me and my. Sweet. That's perfect. So on that note, we pretty much wrapped up the episode for the evening. Now, it has been about three weeks since we were able to record this episode. Uh, I was moving, so unfortunately the editing was a bit delayed, but I finally have settled in and got around to finishing this up. So uh, now that my friends have gone to the Coco March, I am hoping to follow up with them in a future episode and ask about their experiences and we will be able to discuss it on here uh, hopefully soon in a future episode. So thank you guys again for tuning in to the Tom Coolery podcast and you can get their information in the description below if you'd like to follow them or support them.